What's up everybody, CHM Carnivores here. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Now I'm extra, extra excited about this video. I am going to talk about a truncata that I have featured in other videos in the past. And if you're familiar with this channel, this one will be no, uh, no stranger to you. However, what's different about this video is I actually have multiples of this truncata at different life cycles. Uh, and I want to show you what you can expect from all the way from a very small plant to a medium sized plant to a large one, how to take care of each of those in those stages so that way it will help you uh, as your truncata grows that you can go along with it and know what to expect and how to take care of it. I hope you enjoy the video, stick around. All right, everybody, as I talked about in the introduction, this truncata is no stranger to this channel. You have seen it quite often. I am talking about the truncata JB by Patien. Now, the reason why I'm showing it again is this one's gonna be a very uh, extra special video with a little bit of a twist. I have multiples of this JB by Patient and uh, at different life cycles, at different stages of growth. And what I wanna do is use that to sort of show you a time lapse, if you will, um, of what you can expect from these truncatas as they mature and uh, giving a, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of variety because they are siblings and not the same plant, but you'll get a good idea of what to expect as they grow and how to care for them. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it. And I'm gonna start with the smallest one that I have or the youngest one I have, and it's not the smallest and you'll find out why in a minute. But the first one is the smallest one I have this is uh, the smallest JB by patient that I have. Now a little bit about JB and my patient. JB is a extra large uh, Nepenthes truncata giant that um, a producer made and a patient is a highland variety truncata that in itself gets very, very large. This is my smallest or youngest one, but you'll see that it's not the smallest. And there are some different reasons why that can occur and we'll talk about that. But first and foremost, we're gonna go over how to take care of these plants when they're in this size. But before I do that, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a, of a red herring here and I'm gonna talk about a truncata at a smaller size that is in this variety and I wanna show you how to take care of it there before we talk about how to take care of it at this size. The reason why I'm doing that is I want you to understand when you get your truncatas more often than not, unless you wanna pay exorbitant prices, they are gonna be very small and they do require a different type of care. So let's talk about this one right here. This is, without this, piece of grass here. This is Truncata's Titan Tower. So this is Truncata um, Titan by Truncata Giant. Now, this is actually probably even larger than you will get it, but the care for it is the same at this size. When you receive your Truncata, more often than not, unless you buy it on eBay at a grower, it is gonna be about this size. And the care is wildly different from when it is this size. When it's this size, what you wanna do is ensure that the media is 100% sphagnum moss, 100% sphagnum moss. And you, when you put it into the pot, you wanna make sure the media is nice and tight. That could not be further from what you need to do with it one uh, truncata at this size. So when you get an extra small plant like this, or in this case, a medium small plant, you wanna make sure that you get enough media uh, to be able to pack it into a pot tight. Now remember, truncatas have very, very small root systems. They grow as epiphytes and trees, so they are not gonna have a lot of roots to work with, and that's okay. So you wanna make sure that you get your media 100% sphagnum moss, and you wanna pack it in tight. And the way I tell people to do that is you take the plant, you hold the plant up where the root's hanging down, you take a handful of sphagnum moss, hold it like that, take your other handful of sphagnum moss, and make a ball around the root of the plant and then you stuff it into the plant. It should be a tight squeeze in there. The reason for that is that they have very, very, very sensitive roots and they will dry out very quickly. Their roots are at this size, probably this, uh, the, the width of a hair. And so you wanna make sure that they're nice and tight. Now you'll notice that they have little tiny baby pitchers on them, not much to look at. Those are their juvenile pitchers. And as they open, what you can do is you can feed them uh, little tiny beta fish pellets. You can get at any sort of fish store. They're very, very tiny. You wanna put one in, just one into a pitcher and let it mature. I do not recommend at this size putting it in multiple pitchers uh, as you can do your larger ones, but you could put it just one into that baby pitcher. Now, 
let's talk about what we've come here to see the JB by patient as your plant grows it will get to about this size and so what you want to do at this point is remove the plant and start to add in that 50 50 perlite mix so the reason for that is as these plants grow and they get to this size they no longer need that sort of incubation period with their, um, sorry, I'm getting pitcher juice all over me. They don't need that incubation period with uh, around their roots. As a matter of fact, they want air. This is when they start to become very epiphytic and they want that air. Now, 50-50 uh, perlite, the sphagnum moss will do you just fine. And as you'll notice, they still very much have their juvenile pitchers on it, even though they're starting to get their more mature pitchers. Their juvenile pitchers will always look like this. See how it has a very uh, clear sort of line there uh, where it's red and green on the bottom. That is a classic sign of your juvenile pitcher. And the reason why I keep bringing that up and harping on that is a lot of people, when they start growing truncata, they really want to see those big, big pitcher to leaf ratios right away. And you're just not going to get that. Uh, it will take time for that plant to go into its more mature pitchers. And so this one right here is going to be its first mature pitcher and as you can see it has a different structure than this one and it has a different coloration uh, and as you can also see the pitcher to leaf ratio is starting to pick up now the care for this as far as humidity uh, truncatas are very very forgiving no matter what age they are i do recommend back acclimating them once you get them when they're very small like the one i just showed you but at this size uh, is when they can start to handle the more uh, normal, if you would, temperature that you would either have in your house or in your grow tent. Um, because this is a hybrid, this can withstand a very, very long, a wide range of conditions. It's a hybrid between two truncatas, but one happens to be a lowland, the other one happens to be a highland. So it will do just fine. Now, let's talk about the next size up and what to expect. So believe it or not, even though this is the same, almost the same size plant, this is an older plant. And as you will see, the pitcher to leaf ratio is absolutely taken off. And so that is a good sign and a clear indication of a very healthy plant. If this plant was not getting enough humidity, you would still continue to see sort of that stunted leaf growth. Now, as an added bonus, if you'll see here, the tips of these leaves are starting to turn yellow. That is either a sign that it is getting too dry or there's too much light. And I will tell you by the weight of this plant, it is much too dry. But that is the cool thing about uh, Nepenthes truncata is they can withstand a very dry plant. This one happened to get missed by, or mi missed by my spraying. And so it has been dried out for some time, but it has done just fine where other Nepenthes would be suffering. So I'm gonna give this thing a watering at the end of this video. Uh, but as you can see, the pitcher is starting to get that pitcher to leaf ratio jump and it is doing uh, very, very healthy. With the size of this plant right here, it will, it will be able to, able to stand the humidity in your home. It will also be able to ha handle just a normal humidity, 50, 60% uh, humidity. In my growth tent, it's about 70, 75%, but it would be able to withstand it at this size. As you can also see, it's starting to put on a more mature uh, leaf jump, but it still does very much have that heart-shaped leaf. Um, and this is when you're gonna start to see some significant leaf jump growth. Now with here, you'll notice each leaf is almost symmetrical and almost the same size. That is a clear, uh, a good indication of a young juvenile plant trying to get its foothold in. But once it starts to get uh, like to this size, you can see they're still relatively the same size, but it is starting to put on a little bit of a jump. As it matures, as it grows up, it will start to put on even larger jumps. And that is when you're gonna to start to see exponential growth with these plants. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the big one and what you can expect. So here is the big Nepenthes JB by Patient. Um, as you can see, the leaf jumps have been absolutely astronomical. Here is the plant when it was about that size of the last one I showed you. And here is the next leaf on that. As you can see, the leaf is just about the same size as the entire plant when it was at a medium size. And then the leaves have just continued to exponentially grow. That will continue to happen as the plant matures. There's also another really cool thing to see about truncatas. This is not specific to this variety. Uh, all truncatas will end up doing this. 
as you can see, the leaves are very heart shaped uh, when they're about mid size, but there is a point where they'll reach where they start to become strap shape and they start to elongate. In the very, very large truncatas, they will have actually longer leaves. They're still very much a rectangle shape, but they will have uh, a much longer leaf. Um, as you can see, the pitcher to leaf ratio is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This will continue to grow and that pitcher to leaf ratio will continue to get larger and larger. Um, what's also really cool about truncata and for people who are novice at growing these, I want to show you it's gonna be almost impossible to see on camera, but there are little tiny bumps there. That is not an unhealthy plant. That's our actually glands. And if you look at the bo bo uh, bottom of the leaf, you'll see these little indentations. That is the nectar glands. And so that is a very, very healthy plant. Truncatas have a very pronounced nectar gland. And so you will see that quite a bit. So I don't know if I can do this, but as you can see, uh, they start to mature uh, very rapidly when they get about this size and they'll start putting on this plant uh, size rather so The difference in size here is starting to put on its mature pitcher and starting to get that larger shape That's its last juvenile pitcher. This one will start to produce mature pitchers It will start to do uh, start to have exponential leaf jumps and uh, produce these large pitcher to leaf ratios and what will happen is just about the next leaf on this one so the next leaf on this one should start to be almost the size of the entire plant as you see occurred on here so we have a medium sized plant here the next leaf is large and that is when you're going to start getting those showstopper pictures so very important to remember, if you do get a truncata, expect it to be small from the grower, but have patience. None of these are that terribly old. I think those over there are about a year old. This is probably a year and a half to two years old. They will grow very fast for you. They are a lot faster than what people give truncatas. Truncatas got a bad name for growing slow. They are slower than other Nepenthes, but they do grow very well once they get settled in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it. Oh, as a bonus, care for this when they get this size, easy peasy. So this thing will do just fine in 50, 60% humidity. Um, the care for the media is still the same. 50 to 50-50 uh, uh, perlite um, sphagnum mix and you will be just fine. Once it makes it to this size, it becomes easier and easier as they mature. This one is not ready to flower yet. It probably has another year before it will flower, but once it does, it'll produce stalks about six feet tall, and so I gotta be prepared for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope this brought a lot of understanding to how uh, Nepenthes truncata grows in stages. I'm glad that I was able to provide several different types, uh, different uh, uh, lives, uh, I don't know the right word, different uh, points in life of the same plant to show you what you can expect. And I'm glad I had a little small one to see what you expect when you receive. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you soon.